Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ominde and I'll be discussing reticular formation on behalf of Professor Igbigbi. So this picture here just shows the location of the reticular forming blue. This is the brainstem, midbrain, the pons and the medulla. So we have the reticular formation located at the brainstem. All right. So what is really the reticular formation? These are the nuclear and fiber bundles that are located at the brainstem and uh, mainly at the midbrain tegmentum, the dorsal bones, dorsal to inferior olivary nucleus in the medulla, and lateral to cervical dorsal gray column of the spinal cord. So this is the location of the um, reticular formation in the midbrain tegmentum and at the points, all right, and at the um, medulla oblongata. So what's the function of reticular formation? They um, are responsible for arousal and wakefulness, as well as behavioral awareness. Then they regulate the autonomic functions of the cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal, genital urinary tract, and respiratory system. Reticular formation is responsible for consciousness and alertness, and also modulates pain. It regulates the um, somatosensory pathway and modulates reflexes such as coughing, vomiting, and swallowing. We have different cells within the reticular formation. You can classify based on the dendritic patterns. So you'll have isodendritic cells, which are the commonest, and these have long dendrites that radiate in all directions and for long distances. We also have allodendritic uh, cells. These have intermediate uh, size or length of dendrites, while idiodendritic have dendrites that are restricted within a zone. You can classify cells of the reticular formation also based on the size. So gigantocellular cells are giant, magnocellular are medium size, while parvocellular are small in size. So that picture shows you um, the different cells of the reticular formation. Okay, so you have um, parvocellular cells, you have magnocellular cells that are giant cells. We have cells of the raffi nuclei there, gigantocellular cells that are are really big, okay? So these cells of the reticular formation are usually divided into those that are in the midline, like graphy nuclei. Then we have some that are paramedian here. Then we have some that are lateral, so in that order, okay? So ascending reticular activating system usually are fibers that will connect the reticular system to other structures that are above the, the brainstem, like the thalamus, cortex, and the hypothalamus. So from this picture, you can see these are the reticular from the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and the cerebral cortex. Then we also have descending reticular activating system, and these connect the brainstem to um, sensory nerves below and also to the cerebellum. So as you can see, this is the reticular formation. We have fibers going to the cerebellum and others going downwards to the sensory nerves of the spinal cord. We can also have others that are communicating with visual impulses, which are sensory. Descending reticular activation system can be inhibitory or can be facilitatory. So the inhibitory uh, uh, pathways will smoothen uh, uh, um, voluntary movement and increase their accuracy. They have in inhibitory effects onto reflex movement and also help with regulation of muscle tone and maintenance of posture as well as control of vegetative function. Facilitatory um, functions include maintenance of muscle tone and facilitation of the autonomic functions as well as activating the ascending reticular activating system. So we have different zones of the reticular system. The raffi zone is the one located at the midline, and the caudal nuclei usually descend, while the rostral nuclei will ascend. They use serotonin as the neurotransmitter, and serotonin is inhibitory. So this raffi zone is involved in anorexia, depression, and sleep disorders, and the efference to the dorsal horn um, spinal gray usually inhibit pain through encephaline neurotransmitter. So this just shows you the position of the, the midline um, zone, which is raffi or median zone. Then you have the paramedian reticular formation and then the lateral reticular formation. Look at a giant raffi cell here, raffi nuclei. So you have median raffi, then paramedian and lateral. So 
the rough ER at the me uh, median and they use serotonin. Most of the lateral will use norepinephrine. Paramedian zone comprises of paramedian reticular nucleus, the pontine reticular tegmental nucleus, and these usually project to the cerebellum and subserve the function, motor function. The medial zone have effector components which inhibit muscle reflexes and mediate respiratory movement, also mediate pain, posture, and autonomic as well as arousal. Medial zone has abundant giant neurons and the following nuclei are located at the medial zone. We have reticularis uh, gigantocellularis, reticularis pontis caudalis, reticularis pontis oralis, reticularis ventralis and reticularis parvocellularis. So this just shows you the median raphi zone followed by paramedian zone okay, and the lateral zone. So this is a uh, raphi nuclear, but you have now the different nuclei like reticularis pontis caudalis of the paramedian. You have reticularis pontis oralis here. Okay, so they are very different uh, nuclei. The lateral zone is usually sensory and receives input from the spinal cord, cerebrum, and the cranial nerves. The dorsolateral reticular formation has long ascending axons to the thalamus and relay to the cortex. These usually form ascending reticular activating system. As long as you are ascending from the brainstem to the higher centers like thalamus and the cortex, that's ascending reticular activation system. And these are for wakefulness and arousal. The intermediate zone plays a role in autonomic regulation of respiratory function, heart rate, and blood pressure. And it's only located in the medulla between the medial and the lateral zones. So this is the median raphi, this is the paramedian with oralis, uh, oral ponte nucleus, caudal pontis nuclei, with gigantocellular cells and the ventral reticular nucleus. And this is the locus ceruleus nucleus and the parvicellular nucleus of the lateral group. Then the medulla reticular formation has three parts. We have the paramedian that projects to and from the cerebellar and this communicate, uh, coordinate fine movement. We also have the lateral group that are caudal to the inferior olivary complex to mid olivary region. And this has three regions. The magnocellular that's dorsal to the inferior olive, but we also have the parvicellular and the subtrageminal regions. This lateral group receives afferents from the spinal cord as spinal reticular or spinal thalamic, or receive uh, afferents from the red nucleus, and this will be rubro bulba. They send efferents to the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Remember, inferior cerebellar peduncle communicates with the medulla. Then we have the intermediate group of reticular formation of the medulla that are mainly for autonomic regulation of respiration, blood pressure, and heart rate via the bulbospinal pathway. So again, the paramedian raphi, the uh, sorry, the median raphi, median then paramedian. This is the magnocellular reticular nucleus, okay, parvicellular reticular nucleus, and the lateral, and this lateral is mainly within the, the medulla. So again, that just shows you the distribution. You can see the nuclear groups, the lateral nuclear groups, the medial and the median, which is the raphi, okay. The pontine reticular formation have nuclei, uh, which we had already discussed, reticularis pontis caudalis, reticularis pontis oralis, reticulo, tegmental, superior central, locus ceruleus that uses norepinephrine and uh, paramedian pontine reticular formation. So reticulospinal fibers are usually components of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So again, this diagram, we have already discussed it, so you can have a look at it and appreciate the fibers at the, at the bones. The midbrain reticular formation have nuclei within the red nucleus, the cuneiform and subcuneiform. So we have uh, tegmenti pedunculopontine and pedunculopontine, which are cholinergic, and this lie in the locomotor center and are traversed by superior cerebellar peduncle fibers. They receive input from cerebral cortex, medial pallidal segment, and the pass reticulata of the substantia nigra. And usually they project to the thalamus and the pars compactor of the substantia nigra. So this is the substantia nigra, the dorsal part is the pars compactor, the anterior part is the pars reticularis, 
Pass reticularis usually has ion, pass compactor has melanin. This is the red nucleus of the midbrain. And you can appreciate the reticular formation cells here. Okay? So if you see your kilomotor nucleus and red nucleus, you know this is a cross section of the midbrain at the level of superior colliculars. The spinal cord also has reticular formation that originate from the posterior horn cells and ascend anterolaterally to the spinal cord. This terminates to the, on the nucleus reticularis gigantocellularis of the medulla. So the function of these spinal reticular fibers is, are in behavioral awareness, they modify motor and sensory activity, and also modulate electrocortical activity. What are the connections of reticular formation? Afferents to the reticular formation are from cerebellum, cerebral cortex, corpus striatum, thalamus, spinal cord, and sensory pathways. While efferents from reticular formation go to the cortex, cerebellum, diencephalon, spinal cord, red nucleus, the tectum, superior collicular and inferior colliculi, the substantia nigra, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. So this just shows you the connections. Some will go to the thalamus, to the cortex, to the cerebellum, to the uh, tectum, okay, to the hypothalamus, to the thalamus, so different connections of the reticular system. Again, from reticular formation to olivary nucleus in the medulla, to autonomic centers of the medulla, to autonomic centers of the brainstem, autonomic uh, to the cerebellum, to the red nucleus and substantia nigra and tectum, which are at the midbrain, and to the thalamus, hypothalamus, and subthalamus, which are part of the diencephalon. So what are the clinical correlates? The lesions of the reticular system usually cause alteration in consciousness and can lead to coma. Unilateral paramedian pontine nuclei uh, lesions can cause loss of horizontal saccade, uh, directed towards the side of lesion. There is also contralateral gaze deviation as well as gaze evoked lateral nystagmus. Nystagmus is oscillatory eye, eyeball movement on looking away from the side of lesion. Others include somnambulism, uh, nocturnal enuresis. Okay, so uh, nocturnal enuresis is urinating in your sleep, hypersomnia where you sleep too much. Apnea is uh, having moments of not no respiration, and narcolepsy is increased sleep, especially during daytime. Thank you very much. So I hope you've understood um, that the reticular uh, system mainly is responsible for alertness, consciousness, and wakefulness, as well as regulation of the autonomic function. So you remember we have the vital centers of the brainstem, that is vasomotor and cardiorespiratory centers. So these are controlled by the reticular formation. So, um, and these are, reticular formation are just neuronal uh, fibers, nuclear fibers that are at the brainstem, mainly midbrain, pons, and medulla, but some extend to the spinal cord. And then the reticular formation communicate with other parts of the CNS. So they'll communicate with thalamus, hypothalamus, um, substantia nigra in the midbrain, the red nucleus, spinal cord, cerebral cortex. So you have all those communications. Then remember the types of cells based on the dendrites and types of cells based on the size, whether they are gigantocellular or parvocellular. Then remember the zones of reticular formation. The median raphe that use serotonin, then you have the paramedian cells and the lateral cells that are usually the locus ceruleus that use norepinephrine neurotransmitters. So that's just a recap on the reticular formation. I hope um, you've understood. Thank you very much.